Well, Kobe Mainu and Ganacho start in this encounter of Brentford that Man United is going to be playing in the next uh, 40 minutes from now. Welcome to United Matters channel. Hope you guys are really having fun. Wherever you are, smash the like button, comment and share. If I told you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. It's really a late Saturday night game. Man United hosted by Brentford. We've never gonna hate to win away in what we call. We've never gonna hate to win away in London. This is where we're coming through to obviously try to find ourselves really putting ourselves into that position of really seeking a win in London. In London, we've only gonna hate to win against one team that is Fulham. The rest of the teams have gonna hate obviously beat us, and that's where we obviously call in for the required. Uh, for the required effort tonight to obviously clinch this game or clinch this way. Now let's go to the starting 11 that Ten Hag is going to hit obviously put up. The Muslims, uh, Ramadan Karim to the Christians, happy Easter because today is Holy Thursday and tomorrow is when Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Now, the lineup is as follows. Onana, Linderoff, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Rasmus Hoyland, Ganacho, Rathal Veran, Dalo, Aaron Wan Bisaka, Kobe Mainu, and Scott McTominay. The substitutes include Heaton, Kambwala, Maguire, Lisandro Martinez, Amrabat, <coughs> Casimiro, Erickson, Mason Mount, and Anthony. That is the starting eleven for the club of Man United. And you very much know that every time you see a front three of Ganacho, Rashford, and Rasmus Hoyland, we haven't gone ahead to lose a game when these people have gone ahead to start into any game of football that have gone ahead to play. We go to Brentford, they're having Freken, Roslev, Aja, Zanka, Collins, Lewis Porter, Jenelt, Yamolik, Jensen, Wisa, Ivan Tony. That is the starting eleven for the side of Brentford as they come into this hugely weighted game by the fans of Man United all over the world. Then Substitutes Satrakosa, Maupe, Quodos, Honyeka, Mbuemo, Damsgard, Baptist, <coughs> Trevet, and Giso. That is the starting 11 and the bench of uh, Brentford. Brentford comes into this game of football when they've gone ahead to really lose very many games. And Man United had lost two in a row, but they went ahead to obviously recover. And they did what they had to do to see to it that they saw Man United go ahead, beat the side of Everton. Before we went to the international break, after losing to Fulham and Man City, we got back to winning ways. And after beating Everton, went ahead to beat Liverpool. And those are two teams coming in from the Massey side that Eric Ten Hag went ahead to beat hands down. Let's go to the formation that Ten Hag is going to hit, obviously, flaunt today. Now, <coughs> this is the starting eleven for the club of Man United. Have I gotten it right? I think I got it right. I got it right. If I told you watch my match preview, I think the only player that has missed out is Casemiro. But Ten Hag has gone ahead to go with Andre Onana, improving steadily in that goalkeeping department for the club of Man United. That is Andre Onana. And he's going to be very pivotal into this game of football because he needs to control the game by knowing when to go long and when to go short and sometimes to target Rasmus Hoyland because I think we are missing out on very many opportunities um, because of this guy not being able to read the runs of the guy. And the guy you're talking about is Rasmus Hoyland. The more you read the runs of Rasmus Hoyland, the more you really get the best out of him because he's really tall and he can win those early duels and really his holder play is very, very, very exquisite that you could see himself try to put himself in a very good scoring position or else release another player. Aaron Wan Bisaka has been played as the right back, but I think he's going to be played as the left back according to me because... If in the game of Liverpool and Spurs, the two games that last played for Man United played as a left back, I see no reason as to why he's being played as a right back this time round. Maybe Ten Hag will show us exactly what he's going to be playing like. But all I know is that Dalo is going to be played as a right back and Bisaka as the left back into this encounter as we try to collect three points 
into this game of football. We need the points badly. Then Linderov, Rafael Veran playing the central defense. Linderov playing on the left side of the central defense. And Rafael Veran is playing on the right side of the central defense. So that is the back four of Man United. <laughs> and I think it's going to really come up and really get us the results that we really desire and want. We go to the double pivot. Kobe Mainu and Scott McTominay have come up and they've gone ahead to do the needful to start. Kobe Mainu was really doubtful, as I told you in the morning, that he's really doubtful and they don't expect him to come in through to play part into the game of Man United as we're hosted by Brentford. But we thank God that he has gone ahead to come out and really put in a very beautiful shift in there for you to pass the late fitness test alongside Scott McTominay. For Casemiro, he has gone ahead to make it to the bench and the manager finds no reason of really hurrying him back to play in a game of this because the physical the physical levels for this game is really huge. And when you look at the, the coming two games against, um, against Chelsea on Thursday and, and um, Liverpool next Sunday, you really understand exactly how they are gonna really dance to the music in there at the side of um at the side of Brentford. So we anticipate that Kobe Hmeini and Scott McTominay really get a very good go into this game of football. And that's how they played against Liverpool and um we controlled the first thirty minutes of the game. But we wait to see whether they'll continue to dominate it from the likes of Wanyeka Jensen and very many others that are going to be playing in the midfield. But the reason as to why Kobe Payne is very important in this game of football, it's known to many of you that the guy has shown how good he is when it comes to him being the reference point in the midfield for the club of Man United. He's the best reference point we've gonna hate to have into the team of Man United, and no one doubts it. So for Scott McTominay, his energy scoring against Liverpool and putting up an assist as he played against Liverpool obviously gets him into the team of Manchester United as a player. And Ten Hag is like, you are better than Amra, but it means that Amra but has failed to prove to the manager that he can really get into his starting eleven, And that has gone ahead to, to really flux rumors, to influx rumors that he is not going to be considered a player of United next season and the loan is not going to be really given a finance to obviously stay. Ganacho, right attacking midfielder, coming in through from Argentina, having a very good a very good game against El Salvador, 45 minutes and some 60 plus minutes against um, uh, Costa Rica and he's really on fire and is the main man coming in through, being referred to as the star boy, shot number 17. All in all, we just have to look and see what he's he gonna really do tonight. But I know he's gonna be really robust. You know, he's gonna be unreal because of his technicalities that have gonna hit obviously come out well, especially when he's played into the right attacking side of the midfield. His effectiveness and productivity has gonna hit really improve every time ever since Ten Hag took him onto the right side of the attacking midfield that is Ganacho for you. He has gone ahead to score goals for fun. Assists are like assists and his consistency has gone ahead to really keep him onto the team. Marcus Rashford left attacking midfield. He's one of those players that has gone ahead to obviously score in the previous three games they've gone ahead to play <clears throat> against Man City, uh, Everton and Liverpool. That is Rashford for you. Three goals in three. This is his fourth game. Is he going to make it four in four? That's what I will wait for here at the Gitaik Community Stadium because it's really going to be happening that side. And the most important bit of it is to come out and obviously get the results. Bruno Fernandes returning to play as a central attack midfielder for the club of Man United, criticizing us who always tell him that he should play like how other number 10s play during the international break. I hope he really proves us wrong. That is it. Because for me, Rashford came out and put out a statement when you're going to play against Man City. And he was like, for everyone who doubts his commitment from Man United should really, um, should really, really check himself. You know, that no one should question his a commitment to the club of Man United. And he came up 
and put up a very good show against Man City, though he missed out on like two clear cut chances. Then United found themselves in a position of really beating Everton and then Liverpool. So he has been really performing very well. And ever since then, he spoke that he has been scoring goals and putting in the shift. Now, if Bruno Fernandes said that away in Portugal, I want him to come up and really put in a shift. That is what I want. I want to see a shift of this guy up to those standards that we want him to be as a player for the club of Man United. That is the size of um, that is the side of Bruno Fernandes. But I really understand he's gonna really have a very brilliant game today because. He was going to hit rest. He only played one game out of the two that's supposed to be in the point into the international break against Portigo, and he's really doing wonders. When we go to the line, leading the line is Rasmus Hoyland. The last time he played in the Premier League, he scored, I think it was a breast. He last scored, I think, against Luton Town. Those are the two goals he went ahead to score. That is Rasmus Hoyland. Ever since then, he missed out on the game of Fulham. Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup, he missed out on uh, Man City, he missed out on Everton, you know, he missed out on four games, then he returns to obviously stretch his record. Remember, by the time he left and really got injured, he had gone ahead to become the youngest player to ever score in, um, to ever score in six consecutive Premier League games. And today, he has all the right to go seven consecutive Premier League games while scoring goals. Last, I think it was the 17th, we played Liverpool, that was in the FA Cup, and right now he's back in the Premier League. And those three games I was going to have to get in, I think are really going to charge him and really prepare him for this game. And I think he has going to have to attain the all required match fitness to terrorize the side of Brentford. And I think he's going to find himself on target again. I reiterate my words again. I've always told you the guy is going to come out and really score 20 goals a season. 13 so far, 7 in the Premier League, 5 in the Champions League, and 1 in the FA Cup. He now starts off his countdown to say to it that he gets himself the 7 goals in the remaining 12 games we are left with. I'm saying 12 because I know you're going to knock out Coventry City and you're going to be playing in the final of the FA Cup. So these are 10 to go and I know a hat trick of him is waiting in the Premier League. There is a team that Rasmus Hoyland is going to hit a hat trick. I really believe a hat trick of Rasmus Hoyland is not far off. So, and the return of Anton Martial into training, as confirmed us by Eric Ten Hag, will obviously try to raise his ambitions, you know, and he'll be like, I'm hungry. However much, Anton Martial is not going to really be here next season. But in these remaining 8-10 games, there's going to be a variable. I need to prove to the manager that I'm better than him. And he shouldn't go all out for a striker that should really out-edge me. I should be the first choice striker for the club of Pan United. And the one you're planning to sign in the summer should come in through and really be my understudy. That's why he wants to really cap 20 goals at Man United this season. And I know he's going to really hit that milestone because... He has that quality. Now, what have you going to hate to notice about the starting 11 for the club of Man United? Something very important that you need to know. He has been re reported here by Sky Sports, and we've been told by Sky Sports that Eric Ten Hag has stuck with the same United team that started in the win over Liverpool in the FA Cup before the international break. Kobe Mainy was struggling with illness earlier this week, but has recovered and starts. On the bench for United, Alessandro Martinez, Harry Maguire, and Casemiro returning after spells of injury. Mason Mount, who came off the bench against Liverpool, is also in the squad and could make his first league appearance since November. So he last kicked a ball in the Premier League in November, and he's here to really get into the team of Manchester United. So it is really good news that Ten Hag is not going to hate to change his team. And I think for the very first time, I think it's like it has gone ahead to happen twice when Ten Hag has gone ahead to name unchanged 11. You know, I think when you're playing against, um, against Wolves, he named a side that was really unchanged and against West Ham. 
and then Lisandro Martinez went ahead to get injured. That's why the manager really went ahead to change it. But this time round, it looks like the manager is ready to obviously trust the side that went ahead to get a win against Liverpool. And that is really very, very important for the club of Man United that every time you really get that starting eleven and you don't really change lots of players, you really find yourself in a better position to build the cohesion into your team and the chemistry continues to flow and the fluidity in the team grows and that is it let's go to brentford and see how brentford is really lining up tonight fleck Hain in goal they've gone ahead with a system of three five two very much defensive system and they've gone ahead obviously use that frequently and they have fleck Hain in goal then jogesken is playing on the right side of the three-man central defense and Collins is playing on the left side of the three-man central defense and Aja is playing at the center of the three-man central defense. So that means Rasmus Hoyland has to battle against these players. So we wait and see. Now M. Roslev <coughs> is playing as a right wing back and Lewis Porter is playing as a left wing back into the system that Thomas Frank has gone ahead to deploy obviously coming through and take on Man United. Then Jensen, Jan Held, and Yam Yamaliuk, midfield three. Then Ivan Tony and Wisa are leading the line. The pace of Ivan Tony and Wisa should be really observed a lot because we know their attributes. Their biggest attributes is their pace they obviously put up. And Sky Sports have gone ahead to obviously confirm to us that two changes have gone ahead to be made by these two managers. And they've told us that Brentford have made two changes from this side, sorry, from the side that lost to Burnley be, before the international break. One is enforced with the suspended Sergio Roglan replaced, replaced by Ken Lewis Porter. Um, Yamal Luke also comes in for Frank Onyeka, who is really on bench. Frank Onyeka is really one of those players that I went ahead to pay attention to detail to during the African Cup of Nations when he was featuring for his national team, that is Nigeria. And he has gone ahead to show me good quality and that's when i got to know that he plays for brentford but all in all that is it thomas frank comes in through obviously face eric ten Hag, a manager that has been linked to the job of man united and i don't know how far he needs it and i don't know how far he wants to obviously upgrade from brentford to man united a transfer that i never see happen because he is not that kind of manager he really needs to be tested again and again and again and again if i'm gonna hate to take uh, Brentford to like top six, top five, or in the top four, you'd really understand why Manchester United are really considering to do that. But I don't think Man United are into that ilk to really consider that because very many managers have gone ahead to be linked to the club of Man United, but most of those have been lies. You all agree with me. Then pressure is on to us because <laughs> Spurs have gone ahead to win their game today, by the way. Spurs have gone ahead to win their game by two goals to one. Even Aston Villa has gone ahead to win their game against Wolverhampton Wanderers by two goals to nil. And this is how the table stands. And I'll show you the table. You know what it means. It's all about Man United coming in through to obviously cap the fourth place to go into the Champions League. This is the Premier League table. Arsenal 64 points. Liverpool 64. Man City 63. All of these are playing tomorrow. Then Aston Villa. 30 games, they've gone ahead to play two more games ahead of us, and they're having 59 points. Tottenham Hotspur, 29 games, 56 points, and Aston Villa have gone ahead to play one more game than than Aston than Spurs. Then Manchester United has gone ahead to play 28 games and you're having 47 points, meaning that we need to win this game of football to keep ourselves in the range of Spurs of six points. Right now they are nine, and all we need to do is to beat Brentford and make them count you know to see to it that we get to 50 points and then we go up and running that is money for you that's why we need to win this game of football because you've gonna hate to see the job that's gonna have to be done by aston villa and wolverhampton wanderers we need to win this game badly and all you want to see is our side going in for the win tonight I'm confident of this win. I know some of you might be like, we might not win. And there is a team of people who really want Eric Ten Hag to be sacked. And each and every time that passes by, they are crossing their hands for us to go out and lose. Shame upon you. Shame upon you. You people who believe that we should lose 
for Ten Hag to obviously be sacked. And that is really naiveness of the highest order that I've ever gonna hate, that I've never gonna hate to notice in a fan who really believes that to sack the manager he needs to be really he needs to lose games and the manager gets sacked. That shouldn't be the cause. The cause should be simple, it should be all about one thing. It should be about the manager doing his job and the board making a decision. And I would love to see a manager, even if I hate him, like I hated Jose Mourinho, I want to see my manager winning all the games. I want to see my manager winning all the games. I don't want to see my manager not winning all the games. Christopher Enoch, I'm not sure Lindelof will do the needful. He will. Do you think Brentford is a better threat or is a more threat than Liverpool? He did the job against Liverpool. He has been doing the job. You know, he's one of our unsound heroes at the club of Man United that people are not gonna hate to give out attention that people are not gonna hate to give out of attention attention to detail to you. But I can confirm to you, Victor Linderov is really a very good player. And the reason as White and Hagas are gonna hate to choose him ahead of any other defender is because he has gonna hate to do the job. Now, when you look at the bench, Lisandro Martinez and Harry Maguire, I think will just come on. We might see them come on through towards the last 20 games of the game. So 20, 20, 20, towards the last 20 minutes of the game, obviously coming through and get in what we call some minutes for the game of for the game of Chelsea. <clears throat> what I call up for is I want us to kill off the game. Let us get the early goal and let's kill off. Let's kill off the game. <clears throat> You remember the game of Liverpool? We came up and really did the needful. We had close to five, six chances in the first half, and we only had to really convert one chance at the back of the net. That is really ugly for the club of Man United. If you are United, you have to come up in such occasions and really dominate. You know, let's be clinical. Every two chances, every three chances at least, let's score one goal. That is really good, meaning that. If you score, if you create six chances in the first half, score two. If you create nine, <coughs> sorry about that. If you create nine chances, go all out and score. Go all out and score. Um, go all out and score three. That's what I want. I don't want to say that every two chances you score one. That would be really <coughs> a very huge ask for the club of Man United, you know. But if for every three chances we create. All for every three shots or t at goal on target, I mean, if we happen to score <coughs> one, then we can really kill off this game early enough. Let's hand Brentford to the limbo and let's obviously bury them off. I've gone ahead to see teams like um, <coughs> teams like Man City come here and really kill off that game. Um, teams like Liverpool winning by four goals plus into that game where they're going to head play. They've gone ahead to pay a visit to Brentford, and I think it's a game of football where you think. If we really play like how we played against Liverpool for the first 45 minutes, we can really see ourselves really scoring in like three goals. But there is one thing that is really a recurring. You know, you people have gone ahead to forget that Rasmus Hoyland ever much has been scoring goals. These goals have not come in through as an effort, as an effort directly from the players of Man United. And very few have gone ahead to come in through as assists from the players of Man United. You know, few, few, few of those have been deliberate, you know, targeting him. So I call upon for the creative team of Man United to look out for Rasmus Hoyland because we know how good he is. Every time you create chances for him, he really scores these chances and the rest is always history for the club of um, for the club of Man United. So I would love to see my team score goals for fun. That is it. And we need the goal difference, by the because our goal difference is really very, very poor. You never know at the end towards at the end of the season, goal difference might matter a lot. Do you know that the teams you are competing with are really having very many goals more than us? For example, United has a goal difference of 39. Sorry, has a goal difference of zero goals. We've gone ahead to score 39 goals and we've gone ahead to concede 39. These are really very few goals that we've gone ahead to score. If I'd gone ahead to score like 70. And considered like 39, I'm going to have to say, all right, we've been scoring a lot, but we've not been scoring goals. So Tottenham Hotspur has a goal difference of 18, and Aston Villa has a goal difference of 20. Now, how do we add up? We should continue scoring goals and really see that back not leaking goals in. 
So that's what exactly you have to do. And I would fancy to see the likes of Rashford, Ganacho, Bruno Fernandes tracking back until we really regain possession. When you look at the two goals we conceded in the first half against Liverpool, it was because of Man United players not coming in through to do the job. You know, they let these people run into our box and they never marked them. That is the baddest problem what I hate to really do. And that's why we found ourselves on a conceding side. If you're Man United, you wouldn't like to say to it that we are on a conceding side against Brentford because they'll pack the bus. What you have to do is score them first such that they open up, get a second one, as they open up again, get a third one, kill off the game, rest players you have to rest, like Rasmus Hoyland, Agahnacho, Marcus Rashford, and get on Lisandro Martinez, Harry Maguire to get in minutes. Get in Casemiro to get in some 30 minutes, get on Anthony on the field of play to do the job. That's exactly what I require from the club of Man United, and the intent for these players to play in the Champions League should get out of those words and be turned into actions. During the international break, Dalo said about it, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Rasmus Hoyland, every person there wants to play in the Champions League. If you want to play in the Champions League, you might be able to go ahead to win like eight games straight, you know? And no one is going to come out and really say, we are having injuries. Now, as we stand, we are left with only, I think, Evans, I think there are like two players who are really injured, Tyrell Malassia and Anton Martial. The rest of the players are here. Ahmad Diallo is known into this game of football because he got a red card and he's suspended for one game. He's going to return when you're playing against Chelsea. That is Ahmad Diallo for you. So, I don't want to hear anyone saying injuries. The squad we have right now can beat Brentford. All you have to do is <coughs> kick the ball to them and say to it that they concede and really see United walking away with the victory as we celebrate Easter Sunday. That is it. I'm having happy Chris. We have all what it takes to win this game of football. Yeah, the bench is really the bench is really good. When you look at the bench of Man United, let me try to show you the bench. Let me show you the bench on the screen. The bench is really good. The bench of United is really good and I think it can really do a very good job. <clears throat> now, the bench has Amrabat, Harry Maguire, Lisandro Martinez, Mason Mount, Christian Eriksson, Casimiro Anthony, uh, Tom Heaton, and Kambuala. If you're talking about players that can come off the bench and change the game of football, if at all it's not going the right way we want it, Anthony, who scored a goal against Liverpool off the bench, he really looked good. Casimiro, you know his role. He controls the midfield general and then he spares some time to create goals and even be very threatful into what we call the assists. Ericsson is another one that can come off the field of that kind of can, that can come off the bench and really change the game. You remember what he did against Liverpool when the manager brought him in and he did a very fantastic job. Mason Mount also, you know, his attributes are so much offensive. And he can also come off the bench and do the needful. Lisandro Martinez, I mentioned his name for the reason that. He can help us build well from the back. <laughs> That's the beauty of Lisandro Martin is that he can help you build from the park and knock it around. Now, dangerous people that Brentford is having off the bench, Neil Maupi. I'm going to hate to sit it that the manager is going to hate to play him several times off the bench alongside Ivan Tony. Before Ivan Tony returned from suspension, he was really the main man partnering him. But right now, he is Wisa and Ivan Tony. So, when he comes off the bench, he can really put there a very threatening situation for the club of Man United. Frank Onyeka, very good box-to-box -box midfielder in there. And then Mbuemo. This guy is really deadly. Very, very deadly. Mbuemo returning. And he played like 16 minutes in the game. They lost to Burnley by two goals to one. So his return is also a very huge boost for the side of... Uh, Brentford, that is the bench of Man, Man United. So I believe we can really do the needful and really haunt that team. So our bench is better than theirs. Our first level is better than theirs. All you have to do is we are doing the needful. Why am I not seeing Ahmad Diallo on the bench? He got red card when playing against Liverpool. And this is the game is going to this is the game Ahmad Diallo is gonna miss. 
expect him back when you're traveling to London again on Thursday as we host the side of Chelsea. That is it. Alal Dickens. People love Kobe Maini all over the world, but hate Ten Hag, who made him who he is. We are going to win today. I like that narrative. I like that narrative. You know, they like Ganacho. They like Kobe Maini, They like Ahmad Diallo. They love Lisandro Martinez. You know, they love the players that Ten Hag is going to hate to turn out to be the cream de la cream and build the spine of the team of Man United on. But they hate the manager, you know. So... You would have gone ahead to be supporting the manager to get him more Kobe menus, like as shown as that Omori Foson Foson Omari is on his way. Uh, Dan Goho is on his way. Look at Kambwala, you know. There are even other players that are really doing the best of the job down in the academy that Ten Hag is really willing to promote as he keeps his saying that. You have to deserve to play for the club of Man United. That is Eric Ten Hag for you. Then Samuel Mwaniki, Brentford versus United. Tune he'll win for the club of Man United. By the way, the clean sheet will the clean sheet will excite me a lot because that will mean Onana is in the same queue with David Raya, who is having nine clean sheets. And by the way, when you look at Andre Onana, if he keeps a clean sheet today. He might really level up with that guy because David Raya is going to be playing against Man City. And I see, I don't see David Raya coming in through to put in an effort that can stop the side of Man City from scoring. I see Man City scoring tomorrow, though I really gave Arsenal a win. Happy Chris, true bro Dinkins, what, that here, what those young players are doing today is the good thing we have in Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, and I told you, there are two statements that... Uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe went ahead to <coughs> really make, right? First and foremost, he said he doesn't want to go for Kylian Mbappe or Judy Bellingham. He wants to go for the next Judy Bellingham and Kylian Mbappe. And the two players he referred to are already in making at the club of Man United and they're really making us watch the game off our seat edges. Talk about Mbappe. Look at Ganacho. Trust me, Ganacho is like Kylian Mbappe. That is it. The only thing that Ganacho is not going to hate to do is that he doesn't really lead the line. But I know with time, these forwards that play on the wide sides of the, on the wide flanks of the pitch can easily turn out into what we call um, center forwards. But I can really tell you, Ganacho, in the next three years, he's going to be the top point. The talking point of the world. You understand? Then, Kobe Mainu for me is the next Judy Bellingham. And you sort of that they patterned up very well when England is drawing the Belgium. Even when they're playing against Brazil, Kobe Mainu came in through and partnered with Judy Bellingham. So, he is already having those people. And why should they suck a manager who has gone ahead to do exactly what Sir Jim Ratcliffe is dreaming about? Secondly, he talked about patience when he gave Arsenal the trophy. He wishes Arsenal to win the trophy because he believes that Patience is the way to go. Now, if he's thanking and hailing Arsenal for really being patient on a Tata and has gone ahead to deliver on two consecutive seasons, Arsenal competing for the trophy, then why does he have to sack Eric Ten Hag? Yet he believes in patience. The manager has shown potential. His start was better than that of a Tata when he came through at Arsenal. That means if you give him the backing he deserves, he's going to really edge all the managers into the Premier League. That is it. Then Maureen Chebet, I was waiting for Mainu now, feeling so good. Chebet from Eldoret, Kenya. Eldoret, Kenya, how are you, Chebet? Thank you for watching in through. Kobe Mainu, as I told you in the morning, that he'll have to undergo a late fitness test. He has gone ahead to pass it, and he's here to feature for the club of um, for the club of Man United. Then Eugene Mosame, good evening, Aradi. I'm always uncomfortable. Instead of partnering with Varane, guys. They've gone ahead to do the job. Go ahead and we really look into those teams that have gone ahead to even against Liverpool. Out of the three goals we considered, can you come out and blame any of those goals on those two players? We considered those goals because our midfield, the compactness lacked. Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, 
Kobe Mainu and Scott McTominay at a certain point X couldn't do the job. That is the most worrying bit about it. And as a fan of Man United, I think those people have gone ahead to do the needful. LK Uganda, hello my brother. How are you? How are you? How are you, my brother? And hope you're really doing fine. Now there is a Sky Sport pundit at the Tech Community Stadium has told us that Lisandro Martinez and Casimiro were two of the United's best players last season, providing a strong core of Eric Ten Hag. But Lisandro Martinez has barely been available this season, while Casimiro form has dipped sharply. Their mere presence on the bench, though, will serve as a boost for Man United. Obviously, it will serve as a boost for the club of Man United. So often, lacking in leadership at times this season, United is South American duo could be key for the run-in as they chase Champions League football. Ten Hag will be hoping they can rediscover their form. That is it. If you really think that, we are going to get anywhere in as far as Man United is concerned and really getting ourselves to where we deserve to be as a club of Man United, I tell you, we need to obviously see these players back because they've gone ahead to put in a very good shift that has gone ahead to shock every opponent that you've gone ahead to face as a club of Manchester United. So, I really thank everyone who's been watching this channel. Smash the like button, comment, and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, <coughs> endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Eric Ten Hag on menu, debut for England, and now he's back for the club. He says it's a first of him. He's a quality player, but it's about the team. You have to be focused and ready for and ready to fight because it will be a fight. So, obviously, it will be a fight tonight. Not even at the England national team, but even today, it's really going to be a fight. Ten Hag on Lisandro Martinez and Casemiro has said they are back from injury, but they don't have the rhythm yet. They need minutes, but also training. So, that means today they are going to get in some minutes, and then later the manager will decide on whether they start in the game of Chelsea. Then... Ten Hag has said also we are little we are a little light up front on the bench with only Anthony, but there are options at midfield and defense. That is it. Um, <clears throat> us being a little bit light is caused by Anton Martial being away. Um, then even the boy Ahmad Diallo, who saved us against Liverpool, came up and obviously scored. He's also really suspended, so that's why we're a little bit light up front, but we can really get this job done and dusted. When you look at Marcus Rashford, he has all the right to play 90 minutes today because he played just 16 minutes against Brazil when England was versing them, and again, he never played the game of... He never played... <coughs> he never played the games of... Um, he never played in the game of Belgium, so he's really fit. And Anthony has been there, so he can come off and really do the needful. And for Garnacho, he's still young. He's, um, his engine is really good, and his batteries are charged. That's what I can tell you, because he manages himself better, courtesy of the knowledge and wisdom and advice given to him by Cristiano Ronaldo, like has gone ahead to give to Dalo. By the way, there is something these players of United should copy him from. Those two players that have gone ahead to be advised by Ronaldo haven't gone ahead to get injured this season. Dalo and uh, Dalo and uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Dalo and um, Ganacho have been advised by Ronaldo on how to maintain themselves. And if that advice is taken by every player at Man United, we are not going to see these players getting injured. That is it. Um, having LK Uganda, I love you and your great analysis, bro. And unfortunately, I give up. You give up on what? What do you give up on? Then what names do you use on TikTok? <clears throat> uh, I'm soon opening up my TikTok, you know? The one I'm having is not all that for sports. I really want to start doing... Sp like, can we really start to do TikTok videos? Uh -huh, let's see. At the beginning of... Towards the end of next month. I'll tell you my TikTok account. And you guys will always find me there because I know that there is a very huge audience on TikTok that need to send this side to come out and really put in my analysis. And you guys will obviously get to know exactly what my thoughts are. Mohumu Zasam, good evening, Aradi. We are going to win, bro. I feel the win, guys. I feel the win. And let me try to end this live chat. And then I let you go watch the game. Then see you when the game of football is really getting to start. Now. Are we having the prediction coming in through from you, the fans of Man United? 92% have gone ahead to call in for United win. 4% have gone ahead to call in for draw. Brentford, 
two percent to win and 41 people have gone ahead to voting so continue to subscribe to this channel because we want to hit 17,000 subscribers before the end of today i tell you before the end of today i want us to see click 17,000 subscribers before the end of today so guys i sign out for now see you later seven minutes into the game to start after the game you know how we do it the match reaction will be loading onto this channel and we'll be here talking lots of things that you guys want to hear and those that you don't want to hear allow me end it here for everyone who's been part of this live video thank you i love you and you can as well become a member of this channel by really subscribing click your join button and subscribe to either become a member of one month two months or three months if you cannot do that buy a super chat click that dollar sign below and tell me how much you can really offer to this channel and for your comment to be easily seen you can buy a super chat and obviously attach a comment onto it ramadan kareem to the muslims the christians we cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ happy easter holidays and happy easter sunday because jesus is resurrecting tonight just some one hour for him to resurrect and those that believe in the good spirits of their clans that are under the divine supervision of the living to god and the holy spirit i salute you too my salutations to you too me out for now bye